It is the fifth day of DeepSeek's open source release week drops, and in keeping with that, the fifth drop and final drop has been released. Now, truth be told, today's release is something that really just relates to actual high-performance computing clusters and their efficiency, meaning that really this is something that by itself I would never have tried to cover on this channel because this is completely outside the wheelhouse of both myself and I do believe the areas of interest that a lot of my viewers likely have um, being that we like to run things locally at home on desktop like what's behind me however because I want to see this through and this is the last day I am instead of going to try to really go over and explain what this does which partially eludes me in a lot of cases I do just kind of want to show it and then perhaps give some cool like suggested reading pieces in reference to this so with that out of the way, let's just take a really brief and quick look, and this will likely be a very short video. I tend to say that a lot, but this time I think I actually mean it. So day five is 3FS, Thruster for All Deep Seek Data Access, the Fire Flyer file system, which is difficult to say multiple times in a row. So they have concatenated it to 3FS, which is nice. A parallel file system that utilizes the full bandwidth of modern SSDs, so like solid state storage uh, devices. And then RDMA networks, which an RDMA network, from my understanding, is just something that allows... Um, multiple different nodes of graphics cards to actually be able to access each other's like graphics memory without needing a lot of overhead and having to go through like the CPU first and things of that sort. So basically what this is, is a way to have a big storage and training setup from more of almost like a networking aspect that is specifically designed to accelerate AI tasks. Now, Again, we can just kind of click on these. So there were two parts to this. There was 3FS, and there is also Small Pond, which is the data processing framework on 3FS. So from my understanding here, it seems that Small Pond is basically a way to kind of get your data in an organized and f functional format that would allow it to be used with 3FS. But again, this is really stuff that is not probably commonly seen or talked about outside of gigantic server setups. I do actually want to note a couple of cool things. And one of these is that this is actually something that was referenced at least here in 2019 on the High Flyer AI blog. And this is related to the deep seek individuals in the quantitative trading background, because if we actually go to this website right here, not the blog portion of it, but just the actual top level domain here, we can see that this is a it's a quantitative AI hedge fund. So they trade using AI and things of that sort. It is actually kind of interesting to see. There's some like history stuff somewhere here. They talk about the first trade that they made with AI and things of that sort. So it is very interesting, but we can see that 3FS is actually mentioned here from June of 2019. And it talks about it being a special file system because it accelerates model training by speeding up model training by doing and then more technical implementation aspects of this. The second and other thing I want to actually show here in terms of kind of a recommended reading, if you will, is this 2024 AI infrastructure paper because actually 3FS is mentioned in here and perhaps in what to some may be considered an easier, more palatable way, but I mean, if you are interested in this stuff, I would urge you to actually read this paper because it is very interesting. And one of the things of that is in this, they're talking about building a training setup with all the networking and things like that using A100 GPUs and then comparing those to the actual like A100 cluster that you could buy instead. So they were using the A100 PCIe GPUs, which are inherently slower to communicate than what you would get with this DGX A100 that we see right here. Apologize, let me try to zoom in a little. So basically they talk about the Fire Flyer AI HPC architecture, a cluster composed of 10,000 PCIe A100 GPUs. But if we scroll down here, we can actually see that they end up doing a comparison between the performance relative to the cost and things of that sort compared to the uh, DGX cluster, which we can see right here. And if we scroll down, we will actually see that it got an 83% relative performance to the DGX 
However, it was 60% of the cost of the DGX cluster. So, of course, it wasn't directly as performant. However, if you factor in the actual cost and everything like that, it was more efficient. And they talk about like uh, emissions and greenhouse gases and things like that here, which is kind of interesting. But this paper actually kind of seems to talk a little bit about the actual background and creation of these gigantic networking setups that span thousands of graphics cards and hundreds of nodes at minimum. So this is really kind of just cool to get more background info. The only other thing that I really am going to touch upon here, because this is something that probably a lot of folks are at least going to be familiar with from a just like naming convention, like, hey, I've heard of that terminology, is they talk about KV cache. They actually talk about storing the KV cache on an actual storage device as opposed to just putting it in some form of RAM, whether that be like VRAM or CPU RAM. And we can actually see that in the paper right here, and this was really something that I find interesting because it still seems like this is somewhat secretive. We scroll down here and we can not see where 3FS was actually kind of specifically referenced as a high throughput distributed file system. However, if we scroll down here, we see a mention of that specific KV cache and that is right here. So that would be 3FS-KV and that is a shared storage distributed data processing system built on top of 3FS. 3FS-KV supports DeepSeek's KV contents Context caching on disk technology, which reduces the cost of LLM serving by an order of magnitude. And this line right here where KV context caching on disk technology is kind of the whole thing where basically you can put that onto an actual like disk storage device like an SSD. And KV cache, um, just think of it like if you have a super long context window for the LLM that you're speaking to, say, uh, unscientific, but the KV cache will grow as the context length is more utilized. So if I give the model a gigantic document to parse, the KV cache is going to become extremely large, which will make things at the minimum more expensive to run, assuming that the model is already built to handle a large like um, number of like maximum input tokens or something of that sort. But this is really cool because it talks about how that reduces the cost of LLM serving by an order of magnitude, because if you can actually use that very like sacred VRAM for like <laughs> more computations instead of holding kind of things in like short term memory, you can use it cheaper, you'll require less overall resources because obviously SSDs are a crap ton cheaper than the actual graphics card. So this is just seemingly talking about actually being able to handle a lot of the operations that take up a ton of space by offloading them to something that is much cheaper to have abundantly available, which is disk storage. Again, um, that's kind of my understanding of this. And okay, yeah, we see small pond here, which was associated with this. But truthfully, that is really the extent that I am going to talk about this. And really, I suppose, like I said, this is not something I normally would have ever covered on this channel because it is completely like if there's like a Venn diagram with like an overlapping circle in the middle, like this would have been like all the way off to the side. So but I committed to covering the five days of Deep Seek's open source release week, which um, I have now concluded and can now go and reflect on my decision where I initially thought these would just be kind of like video model. Oh, it's a text to 3D model. I can download them and run them real simply. I was, uh, <laughs> I was quite surprised at the technical um, level at which all of these releases resided upon, I suppose we could say. So that's going to wrap this up in the five days of the open source release week from DeepSeek. So I'll probably just go back to doing videos on like agentic stuff. I'll try to throw out a couple more Jetson videos here and there if I can. I did order um, one of those framework, the AI Ryzen 395 PC. Um, I'll probably do a quick video on that because mine's in batch one. So hopefully I get it sooner than later. And yeah, thanks for watching. <laughs>